I think the opportunity with Midway to do something different came from realizing that we're doing a classic war epic, but how do you update it for a modern audience? And the challenge for us was, what does that mean? And I think part of it is reflecting both sides of the story, that we've seen versions of Midway before, but to really dive in on the Japanese side and reflect the new research and understand, one, you know, what motivated their entry into the war, and two, the human cost of being on these characters, and that we're telling a story of courage and sacrifice, but it's not just a story. It's not this nationalistic story of courage and sacrifice. It's a human story of courage and sacrifice. And yes, there are all sorts of complicated reasons for why everyone entered that war, but ultimately you have people you know, giving their lives in the service of their country and in the service of the people they're serving with, and that is something powerful and worth telling. I think it was very important to us to tell a balanced story that showed both sides of the battle in order to reflect that this is a human story, and that the power of it to me comes from the fact that there is courage and sacrifice on both sides, and that ultimately, you know, that is the horror of war, that, you know, as Patton said, that you're trying to make some other poor das bastard die for his country, that these are, you know, if you're looking at the Japanese side, you have someone who was maybe born in a village and had never been on a boat before and is suddenly trained up and is suddenly standing on a hangar deck that is grossly on fire and he knows he's probably not going to get off and he's trying to save the ship. And that that is incredibly relatable and human and reminds us that, you know, we are all, we get into these conflicts, but ultimately there is something human that runs underneath it all. I think we look back on the Second World War because it feels from a distance like it was it was morally uncomplicated from an American perspective, that we were attacked in Pearl Harbor and we were responding to it. And the frame of this story is essentially a revenge story, that I was very aware that the American military between the wars was a very small institution. So when the USS Arizona blew up, it was very likely that you knew someone aboard or if you were serving in the Navy. So that there are these personal costs that, and personal stakes that dragged us through to the Battle of Midway just six months later. You know, American Navy's been doing incredibly poorly, and then suddenly you have this turnaround moment where they sink four of the Japanese carriers. And from that moment on, this war is going to be fought on roughly equal footing until eventually the American reinforcements begin to overwhelm the Japanese. But here is a enormous epic comeback story that has been told in various forms before, but never told with hopefully this sweep and never told with the specificity of this group of people, you know, led by Richard Halsey Best, Dick Best, whose story I find incredibly compelling. This is someone who, you know, I read a paragraph about him and thought, here's someone who should have won the Medal of Honor. He never flew again after the Battle of Midway. There's a natural end to this story. And I'd never seen his story in either the documentaries or movies I'd seen before. And to be able to tell his story and, you know, this story of loss and sacrifice felt important. So we were very fortunate that, uh, Part of Paul Allen's legacy is he commissioned the ship, the RV Petrel, to go out and find uh, Navy wrecks. And uh, this last week, they were able to stumble upon, um, not stumble upon, through dedicated research, we were able to figure out you know, where the battle had happened, sonar map the floor, and eventually find the cargo, which is the first ship that we see uh, McCluskey and Dickinson dive upon in, the, in our battle sequence. And they found her at 6,000 meters lying under the ocean floor because you know, the light doesn't penetrate that deep, relatively well preserved. You can see the terrible fires that raged aboard her. You can see you know, little details of the ship that we never knew because we're working off of, you know, this information was classified before the war. We have these grainy spy photographs and suddenly you're seeing the actual ship preserved as she sank, as the fires were extinguished. And you realize, first of all, you're learning something about history. We will, we will learn something from that. And second of all, this is hallowed ground. And, you know, there are hundreds of Japanese sailors who died aboard that ship. It is, it is a tomb. And also, the, you know, Eugene Lindsay and some of these other American pilots we saw go down, we'll be able to find their planes. So hopefully we'll be able to bring, you know, some measure of comfort to these families and understanding about what actually happened, but also that we can learn something important about this battle and, and the details. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!